So this is my submission for the Badger Hacking Contest. So the idea behind a POV display, that's persistence of vision, is as your lights sweep across, they'll be blinking at so fat, such a fast rate that you can't see them go on and off and it makes a, sort of a tracer line of your eyes and it appears that it's all one image. First thing I did was I put it inside of this flashlight case. Um, and to get it in there I hacked the ever-loving daylights out of it. So I broke all the LEDs off of the main board. I took the switch that was in there. This is a handy power switch that uh, toggles between two sets of LEDs. I took that off of its board, flipped the board over, bent the leads up so that the switch was then uh, surface mounted. Uh, that allowed me to get the badger in there without contacting the main power leads against the top of the FTDI chip. Also it's a battery. It has three AAA batteries and that is hooked up via this connector to the, uh, the uh, USB power input and that allows me to use that little LDO right in there to regulate the voltage down to 3.3 volts. Uh, let's see. From there, I took three of the digital uh, GPIOs and sent them out on purple, gray, and white as the three wires you need to control these three shift or my nine shift registers. So uh, each shift register has uh, 16 LEDs hooked up to it. Eight on this side, eight on the opposite side. Each bank of LEDs is hooked up to a bust resistor. Uh, that saved me quite a bit of soldering and a bit of board space as well. But adding all those tiny little rat's nest wires in there was a lot of work. I'm pretty confident I put 20 hours of work into assembly on these things. So, after the LEDs get power and connect to the resistor, that uh, ground bus for this side and the other side each goes to these transistors so that I can turn off the two sides independently. Uh, the idea behind that was I wanted to display text and if I put the same shape of character on both sides of the wheel it wouldn't display right so I was gonna put uh, forward letters on one on the top and backwards letters on the back so that that way the uh, the viewer would always see the text correctly uh, what I discovered after I built this thing is I can only get about 24 flashes in a rotation uh, because of the speed of this uh, little 4 kilohertz uh, microcontroller. I haven't tested this, but my assumption is if I put a faster, like a full powered, you know, 16 megahertz Arduino in there or even the new red board, um, that this thing would work at a much higher uh, resolution. So I would have soldered all this in, but I decided it would save me some time to uh, use the pin headers and all these existing wires I had already. Let's see, and after, uh, after I got the thing together, a bit of experimentation, I realized that my Hall effect sensors it's on the other side, and just pointing out where it ought to be. My Hall effect sensors weren't getting enough voltage to uh, register the fields. So what I had to do is add another battery. The model I have 
It's capable of uh, 4 volts up to 24 volts or so. I might might be 28. So uh, hooking up 9 volts to this was no problem. It has uh, ground in common with the rest of the system, but the, the uh, when the sensor is triggered, it, it uh, sets its signal pin from high Z to ground, or digital low. So there's really no way for it to introduce the 9 volts into the rest of the system unless something goes horribly wrong. Uh, with testing, this turned out to not fry my system, so that was a really good triumph. Also, if I had a higher power board, it would be running off of 5 volts, and then I would be able to uh, drive the Hall effect sensors directly without any need for a, a separate power supply. So as you can see, there's no copper on this perf board. So everything on here is a lead. And there's two coming through and they bend back together. And I soldered them together that way. And it would be really nice to have the stability of actually of the, the copper cladding. But I didn't have that on here. Um, you'll see these longer leads are from the capacitors I used on the shift registers. That was a convenient way to tie that in there. Just uh, I put the tiny little ceramic capacitor underneath the uh, IC socket. So up here you'll see the Hull effect sensor. I needed an inexpensive way to get it to stand off of the board. Uh, so I found my bucket of Cat5 tips. Turns out super glue works great between a Cat5 tip and this perf board. Uh, it does not work well between the, the Cat5 tip and the whole effect sensor body. So this is covered in hot glue now. So the board itself is attached to the wheel with five little zip ties. Now along one edge of the spoke and then one on the adjacent spoke. I took a tip from Adafruit's uh, spoke POV in uh, the shape of this.